this is Vasu DJ. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to discuss about inductive method of teaching mathematics. One of the method of teaching mathematics. First, we will see that what is inductive method. The concept of inductive method. Inductive method is advocated by Pestolozzi and Francis Bacon. Inductive method is based on induction. Induction is the process of providing a universal truth or a theorem by showing that if it is true of any particular case, it is true of the next case in the same serial order and hence true for any such cases. If one truly applies to a particular case and is equally applicable to different similar cases, it is accepted as a general rule or formula. Therefore, inductive method process proceeds from particular cases to general rules or formulae, concrete instance to abstract rule, known to unknown, simple to complex. Totally inductive method is, if we take the problem, first we have to, to explain any concept, we have to take the, some examples, then we can come to the definition. If you teach any the types of triangle, the scaling triangle, first you take the examples first. So, 3-4 triangle you have to take, we are asking the question, what are the, the length of each side, then we have to compare the three triangles then we they will say that the student all the triangles are having different measure side so having different measures then we say it is scaling triangle so this example then come to definition so that such type of method that is nothing but inductive method so sometimes we have to come to formula first example you will take then end with the formula that is inductive method so this method has been found to be very suitable for teaching mathematics because many mathematical formulae and generalization are the results of induction in teaching mathematics normally majority of the concept we can use this method that too in primary level is very much suitable to the student to learn better for example, here, if we wish to frame the formula a minus b whole square is equal to a square minus b plus b square, what we can do? First, we have to ask a square means what? a into a, a cube, a into a into a. So, by taking the example, we have to tell that instead of a, so we can write, if we write a minus b, what you will write? So, they will say a minus b into a minus b. Then, what is this? Multiplication of binomial division. After multiplication, they will get this formula a square minus 2 a b plus b square. So, when the student actually multiply a minus b into a minus b two times. So, then the product they will get the formula. So, what are the steps in inductive method? The selection of a number of cases. As I told that, so to teach any concept, two, three examples you will take to make them understand. Then, Observe the cases under given condition. Investigation and analysis. So they have to investigate first example, second example, then they will analyze what is the difference and all and find common correlation. So in all the in the current triangle example, in all the triangle having different measurement of sides. There is common relation. So then afterwards arriving at generalization means. So here, at any in any triangle, if all the sides are not equal, such a triangle is called scaling triangle. So that last step is arriving at general conclusion. So we can verify that by applying the given data. These are the steps in inductive method. Now let us see what are the merits of inductive method. The first is it helps in understanding. So by taking the example, the known things. So, it is very easy to understand by students. It is logical method and develops critical thinking. Wherever we will see the systematic step by step, so it is logical and also develop 
spiritual thinking. So how we get the step? It encourages active participation of the students in learning. It provides ample opportunities for exploration and observation. It sustains the student's interest as they proceed from known to unknown. It curbs the tendency to root learning as it clears the doubts of the students. So there is no root learning. It facilitates meaningful learning. Each step they can understand, they will proceed. So it leads to meaningful learning. It enhances the self-confidence. They only involve in finding the formula, so they will develop the confidence. So enhance the self-confidence. It is helpful for beginners as it provides a number of concrete examples. It encourages experimentation, observation, analytical thinking and reasoning. It facilitates fixation and retention of mathematical concepts, rules and formulae. It helps in increasing the pupil teacher contact. <coughs> if taking the example, the teacher should ask the student, what do you observe here? What do they observe in the second example? So that that increases the interaction in the classroom. That is, pupil teacher contact will increase. It does not burden the mind. Formula becomes easy to remember. So no burden. They only involve in the finding the formula. So it becomes very easy to remember. It discourages cramming and also reduces the homework. So they know by hurting, mug up and it reduces the homework. So these are the merits. Now let some demerits. So every method, whatever the thing we have for merits and demerits. Now what are the demerits of this inductive method? This method is limited in range and is not suitable for all Topic. Certain complex and complicated formula cannot be generalized in this manner. So it is, this method is not suitable for all the topics. This is a common demerit for all the methods of teaching of any subject. So for here, suppose in compound interest. So I to find the compound interest that is amount minus p. So they should know that amount formula. So p into 1 plus r by 100 over n. So to prove this one, it will take a lot of time. That too, not necessary to prove that one for lower level classes. So that in such a case, this is not suitable. It is lengthy, time consuming and laborious method. Go on proving, go in step following <coughs> and find the, some formula, it will take a lot of time. Inductive reasoning is not absolutely Inclusive because the generalization made with help of few specific examples may not hold good in all cases. Some cases it suitable, so we can apply, but not for all the cases. We don't complete the study of topics simply by discovering a formula, but a lot of supplementary work and practice is required for fixing the topic in learner's mind. So go on following this inductive method for all the topics. So the teacher cannot complete their portion and all. So along with the teaching, they should do some practice or and for some supplementary work they have to do. If doing this one, so they cannot complete, they cannot fulfill their job. This method is not suitable for higher classes. Because higher order mathematical principles cannot be generalized through the observation of concrete cases. It is not suitable for mathematically gifted students as unnecessary detail and too many examples make the teaching dull and boring. Sometimes teacher will take many examples to make them to understand. So for average or below average students is okay, but for gifted students getting bored. So one example is enough them to understand, but taking the three more examples by teacher, it makes the gifted student boring. So these are the demerits. Thank you for watching my video. If not yet subscribed, please subscribe my channel.